these things. We're in 2 Corinthians chapter 2 tonight. Alrighty, I will go ahead and start in verse 1. So I said to myself, no, I won't do it. I won't make them unhappy with another painful visit. For if I cause you pain and make you sad, who is going to make me glad? That is why I wrote as I did in my last letter, so that when I do come, I will not be made sad by the very ones who ought to give me the greatest joy. Surely you know that my happiness depends on your happiness. How painful it was to write that letter. Heartbroken, I cried over it. I didn't want to hurt you, but I wanted you to know how very much I love you. Oh, that's so sweet. So um, Paul's talking here um, uh, about, actually he's, he's talking about a letter that is not 1 Corinthians. Um, so there was a letter in between 1 Corinthians and 2 Corinthians, we believe. And so that's what he is talking about. But, but he's talking about um, coming to them again and making them sad um and you know we know uh we know that corinth was a rough place right it was a rough place and he really had to set them straight on quite a few things and you know maybe not everything was malicious mm -hmm. and it wasn't about disobedience it was maybe there's some Mis misunderstanding so he had to be a little he had to be a little tough with them mm -hmm. in first Corinthians there was you know there was some real bad stuff going on he had to say you can't tolerate that you can't tolerate evil and like you know you can't you just can't you can't mess with it you just can't and so um, and so first Corinthians had some success it didn't have complete success because he needed to write another letter. We didn't. We don't know what that letter is, um, but uh, but it must have been harsh. Yeah, it 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 sounds like it. It sounds like he had to give them some, like you were saying, some reprimand, some tough love, yeah. some tough love. Yes. And um, I think most people uh, don't like to um, be given tough love. <laughs> you know, the, the truth hurts, as or they say. Or confronted. Yeah, right. the truth hurts. And, and um, even though you, you even do it lovingly or um, from a place of love, uh, people can get very defensive um, very quickly. Mm -hmm. and, and that I think he was worried about that, uh, yeah. worried about their reaction to this letter. Um, and also in within Corinth, um, this is all new to them. Mm -hmm. They um, they worshipped many gods. There was a lot of pagan rituals going on. There was um, a lot of heathenism going on. Um, Immorality, and, yes. yeah, and so and so that was normal to them. That yeah. environment was yeah. normal to them. So um, living a pious life um, under one god. Uh, was a totally new experience, thought process, and so I think there was a lot of trial and error for for the Corinthians and yeah, um, and, and for this curve. yeah for this church <laughs> um, <clears throat> because yes there were obviously there were Jews that were there but this is in Greece and so it's culturally different as yes. well. Gentiles are, mm -hmm. yeah, they didn't, they didn't grow up with, with one God, with monotheism mm -hmm. and, and all the laws, <clears throat> all the laws that the Jews were, they grew up with it. They, mm -hmm. they just knew to do them. Um, so, so some of those laws, um, you know, were kind of washed away with when Jesus came and fulfilled yeah. the law. Right. Um, and so, but there are still were some customs and laws that the Jewish people they would still have known about, wanted wanted to abide by and those you know those rituals and those laws were a part of the first church so mm -hmm. yeah so for somebody tough. yeah so for somebody just think of yourself if you just started for it you know it's a stretch but for instance if you just started all of the sudden one day to go to synagogue you would be lost. <laughs> you would be like, when do I what stand? Is this? When? What's when going on? What are they on? singing? 
Right. Why are they singing in Hebrew? So everything is would be totally <laughs> new different, yes. and different to you. So <laughs> that's kind of what I try to think of when when reading when reading this because of course today we're used to it, right? We're mm-hmm. used to church. We're used to, you know, Jesus and and God and and we have this book yeah. Uh, put it all together for us. So um, the, they early, didn't. The early church didn't have that. They had word of mouth, mm-hmm. almost like an oral um, tradition. Ad- oral yeah. traditions and History. handing down those um, stories and those um, laws and traditions down mm-hmm. through the generations. Yeah, it was. There was a lot to do. There was a lot to do, and so Paul, um, he, you know. He had a uh, he, he had to deal with quite a few things, and so he talks about in the um, in our commentary. It talks about that he had to deal with those in the church who had been attacking and undermining his authority mm-hmm. as an apostle of Jesus Christ, thus confusing other believers. And mm-hmm. um, and he did. I think we talked about that yeah, a last... little bit in the beginning. Mm-hmm. This first chapter of Second Corinthians, like. Who you know, like what what authority does he have? And he's like, let me let me tell you my story again. You know, so um, so it's there was a lot to do. Clearly, there were a lot of letters to be written. There were a lot of visits that needed to be made. Mm-hmm. And um, but like you know, but like you said, Jen, mm-hmm. when it's all new, um, you know, if you if you're doing something all new, you need a mentor. You need somebody to answer your questions. Mm-hmm. You know, I mean. Maybe you're about to file your taxes. Like this is, it's it's January. It's the end of January right now. If you're watching this on replay, but you know, it's like I remember every every January. I'm like, now what do we do? And <laughs> what laws have changed? And yeah. you know, it's like you have to reacquaint yourself. And I do that every year, right? We file taxes every year. These people had no, they they didn't have anybody mm-hmm. to really ask except, and there were even people who were ornery. So right, and I mean, I'm sure Paul had set up. Mm -hmm. um, You know, he had discipled people, and Mm -hmm. he had um, put people in place in the church to continue. Um, But when there was a question, or if something was brought up, or there was um, somebody in the congregation who um, was forceful in their belief, um, saying, "No, I don't think that's the way we should do this." I mean, they couldn't pick up the phone and call Paul. No. They they couldn't text him. Yeah. They they had to write a letter and wait and then r- wait to receive the letter. I mean, it could take months and months and months and months before they got a response and so yeah, it's it's a lot. It's be a lot. thankful for for our our uh, ability to connect Ooh, just dear. like we're doing right now. So blessed, aren't we? We're mm-hmm. so blessed. So it's good and bad. <laughs> it's yeah. good for what we're doing here. Mm-hmm. Can be bad for some other things because you feel like you can't ever get away. Yeah, things happen. Information, bad things even can mm-hmm. happen at the speed of light, just like good things. But uh, but yeah. So he. Um, but you know, I I see like I always see when I write live, when I read Paul's writings is is great love. Mm-hmm. You know, and so even though. He's talking about reprimanding. Like he's he's not excited to reprimand these people. He's not excited to you know to say say the things that might need to be said. The tough love situation, right? Um, but he cared enough, right? He cared enough to say those things. And um, you know, a lot of times, even with pastors, you know, we have to preach the word as it is given, not as you know, not as we would want it to be, but as it is given. And so, you know, on some level, like, you know, when when I preach, or my husband preaches, or you've seen other pastors preach, like, we, we can be your best friend, or we can be your worst enemy, um, because you will not be able to go to, well, before Jesus Christ, on the judgment day, and say, I didn't know. Right, our whole job is to present the gospel in, in, you know, in a way that can be understood, but truth, Mm -hmm. but truth. And so, you, you know, you've literally been stripped of the excuse 
that you don't know what's going on and that um, that will forever be the case. Um, and so you have heard it um, and you have a burden to to pick it up and run with it, right? Literally for your life, for your eternity, for your existence. Um, and so it, you know, he, Paul's kind of saying the same thing. Like, I, I don't love doing all of this. I have to do it. I have to confront you. I have to tell you the truth. It's, it's my job. It's his job, and it's, and it's their eternal souls. It's and, important. You know, and Paul does yeah. not want that burden of, yeah. of people's souls. Mm -hmm. um, because, because as, as pastors, as, as ministers, as preachers, um, people that are professing the word, um, and that are called to do that, they have a, they have that burden, you know, Tina, yeah. Pastor Tina, Pastor Paul have that burden and they will be judged differently because they were called to, to give the word, um, and to tell the truth. Yeah. And there are those that cherry pick things and we'll I think we get back we get into that at the end of this of this chapter. It's true, it's true. But yeah, we uh it says in our commentary it says sometimes our friends make choices that we know are wrong. Mm -hmm. Um if we ignore their behavior and we let them continue in it, we won't be showing love to them. We show love by honestly sharing our concerns in order to help these friends do and be their very best for God. When we don't make any move to help, we show them that we are more concerned about being well-liked than about what is going to actually happen to them. Mm -hmm. um, and that's, you know, I think we have those talks a lot about with our teenagers, mm -hmm. what's being a good friend, you know, because you know, have, hiding that somebody's doing drugs or, you know, because, or, you know, keeping secrets when kids are doing dangerous behaviors or they have suicidal behaviors, like those are those are not like secrets to keep. Like mm -hmm. you're being a really good friend when you know when you tell somebody that hey, that this this kid needs help, and uh, they're not going down the right path. And I know we even had a we had a situation here within the church recently, and uh, and one of the teenagers said, yeah, my friend is mad at me. Um, because she didn't want me uh, to kind of tell on her. She said, but what kind of friend would I be, you know, if I kept this stuff to myself? Mm -hmm. I'm like, yeah. And, and she came around. She totally came around. Uh, let's see. John said here, um, it can be this way in, in, the days, in today's church. If you go from church to church, you'll hear they don't do this or that in um, so-and-so's church. So yeah, a lot of contradictions can yeah. happen. Mm -hmm. um, and he put, so you can be misguided in today's church. A hundred percent. A hundred percent. Yeah. Um, that's where, you know, I've said to like my, my children um, and, and, you know, those that I care about and those that are even maybe I don't care. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Um, but <laughs> any, anybody that says they're a believer and that they do, they go to church. I'm always like, you know, make sure that when you know when the pastor is talking, that it's biblical. They're talking, you know, from the Bible, and mm -hmm. they're and you know the verses that they're quoting. They're quoting the entire thing, not just parts that coincide with maybe an agenda. So. It's true. It's true. The truth isn't easy. I love it. I'm I'm one of those that uh, is an anomaly. <laughs> Jen likes it. I like it. Give, give her the hard facts. Give me the give me the hard truth. Confront her. Give um, me. I love I love being convicted. Yeah, I do. I love being convicted because it's like, oh, okay, God, I I I, I, done I, I got you. I, I done that. Yeah, I feel that one. You know. Yes, and uh, and and honestly, like if you're not convicted occasionally, um, you you might you, be lukewarm. Yeah, you <laughs> might be. You might be because I'm telling you, when when it comes and it hits, and you're like, hmm, mm -hmm. should not have done it that way, exactly. or should not have said that, shouldn't have gone there. Yeah, you're like oh, okay, God, that sermon was for me today. I got you. <laughs> Ouch. Uh, you're like, were you see. preaching to me? Yeah. Sometimes I'm preaching to myself. <laughs> True. Um, let's see, John said, the truth will set you free. It does. Yes. 
That's what the Bible says. Yes. And it and the hard truth does. You know, I've I've had to have hard conversations with my son who is um I would say he is a believer, not a follower, because there is to me there is a difference between mm -hmm. somebody who believes and somebody who follows. Um so he's a believer, but he doesn't necessarily want to follow. Mm -hmm. And uh there's been had to be some serious heavy conversations where um like, hey, you you go this way, I'm not going with you <laughs> that way, you yeah. know, or we are going to have to cut not our ties as, uh, you know, mother and son, but financial ties or helping in and certain ways. Not supporting that. Yeah, and not, not supporting, supporting yeah. decisions that I don't feel yeah. um, uh, go or along. Or biblical. Yeah, or biblical and go along with what God would intend for but that, people but, to do. But that's love, right? I mean, mm -hmm. and this is... You've probably had discussions with your kids or your close friends like that, and you know maybe you can you can even put that stuff in in the chat if you would like. You know maybe a, a time where you needed to be a little tough to to illuminate the situation, or maybe that happened to you. I mean I know there's been many times where people have had to have a tough conversation with me. Oh yeah, because me my too. my blinders. Um, and I'm not making excuses for myself. I'm just saying my blinders definitely allowed me to stay in a place where mm -hmm. I wasn't healthy, wasn't healthy, mm -hmm. or I could be, I could be behave, I could behave badly and completely justify it, you know? So mm -hmm. it's, uh, I'm grateful, um, for, and, and maybe you remember those talks. I think I remember those talks more than I remember like the, the encouragement talks. Um, that I've received from friends and family and, and loved ones. But, the, you know, I think I've when it's done with love, and I, I will preface it with that because, you know, you can swoop in and just be cruel. Mm -hmm. um, and I don't know that that works as well. That wouldn't work on me as well. And so when you, but, you know, if you go and you talk to somebody and you, you buffer it with love mm -hmm. and you make sure that they understand that, you know, you're not rejecting them completely, um, but that you just, that you, you expect, you would say, and I always say this, like, if you saw this in me, I would hope that you would come to me. Um, so, yeah, so that's where Paul is, the Apostle Paul, and uh, he's been doing a lot of this with this poor church in Corinth, but only because he loves them so much. Right. He wants he them to them. thrive. He wants them to grow, mm -hmm. and um, and he doesn't want them to get stunted, you know, and so that right. there needs, there sometimes needs to be shifts. There needs to be um, talks and discussions. <laughs> Yes. done and and that's even in today's church that's even i'm sure in families all this is all makes sense right because it's there's a church family there's your own family there's your chosen family you know mm -hmm. maybe friends and and so forth so yeah it's and how relationships yeah there's it's really it's relationships yeah and that's what he's looking at here all righty we go ahead pick back up in verse five of second corinthians I am not <clears throat> overstating it when I say that the man who caused all the trouble hurt your entire church more than he hurt me. He was punished enough when most of you were united in your judgment against him. Now it is time to forgive him and comfort him. Otherwise, he may become so discouraged that he won't be able to recover. Now show him that you still love him. Mm. I'll stop there because I think that's the, the whole yeah. little thing about forgiveness so this is um this is this is this is a hard one this is a hard one because you know there's um we have to remember that you know that the the purpose of church discipline is actually to restore mm -hmm. a person back to the path that they need to be on and so yes there sometimes you need to excommunicate is like an old-fashioned word but there's sometimes I mean and it, it certainly sounded like this man had had been punished by the church maybe asked to leave mm. you know but if he repented if he repented then we we can't then remain so harsh and remain because that's not what God does with us mm -hmm. and so he we can't we can't remain in judgment mode 
when when they repent and they wanted they want to be better and do better and they're willing to come you know under authority um then we have to chew we have to like switch over from you know from uh, what's the word um you know disciplining them we ha we have to we have to help them be restored and i can only imagine you know like e the whole church like came together and and disciplined this guy and that's got to be incredibly embarrassing right mm -hmm. and maybe you'd want to go crawl under a rock but he came back and he said he's sorry and he you know and he he repented so now this same church that disciplined him and that was united in like uh, mm -hmm. you know it's like now they have to be united and loving him back into the fold into the flock right and it you still, that's hard yeah and i mean the forgiveness part you know but the the scars are still going to be there yes. right this yes. you know the the wounds are still still healing yeah so the forgiveness is 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 for yourself too mm -hmm. it's for yourself as well and um and i believe it doesn't you know doesn't mean that everything has to go right back to yeah. how things were um i you know in within the church that you know you could kind of let them back in kind of slowly with maybe some jobs or you know responsibilities yeah um within the church and, and even, with some rules maybe. yeah and within your yeah. own within your own life if there's somebody that has wronged you um, you know, and forgiving them is great. And sometimes you need to sever ties and mm -hmm. you can be all, you know, I, I wish you well, but I don't need to have a relationship. Yeah. Um, but this is not the case, but there are some, some well, cases for that. They come back and they repent. Right. And I think that's, that's the key here. Cause you know, you, you know, the church, the church, a lot of times, um, well, you don't want the church to just turn a blind eye to mm. to evil, which is what he was, which was the apostle Paul was talking about in First Corinthians. We can't do that, right? And so it it actually it says here in our commentary it says two church two mistakes in church discipline should be avoided: being too lenient um, in and not correcting mistakes, or being too harsh and not forgiving the sinner. Mm -hmm. Right? There is a time to comfort. And a, t a time to confront, sorry, and a time to comfort. So um, I don't know. Let's see, John uh, says here, as believers, we go into sin with eyes wide open, then try and make excuses to make it seem as though we don't knowingly do it. Mm -hmm. It's true. It's true. And so, um, so the church in this case, the Corinth church, um, they came down on him. It even it it said that they. Well, which verse was that? It said that they were all together. They were all united. Um, uh, let's see, is that verse 5? Right here, it's verse 6. Verse 6. Sufficient for one, a punishment which was inflicted by the majority. So everybody got together to to do the punishment. Now we have to figure out how are we going, if they're, if they're repentant, how are we going to forgive and comfort this person it says otherwise they might be overwhelmed by excessive sorrow so wherefore i urge you to reaffirm your love for him now the word repent and if i'm correct me if i'm wrong the word repent doesn't just mean saying you're sorry mm -mm. repent means saying you're sorry you you know you know what you did was wrong and you are going to not do it again you're changing your viewpoint or you're changing your actions or both um and yeah and going you know getting back on track um so it doesn't just it isn't just a flip, flippant oh i'm sorry that's not what repenting means yeah. it it means turning away mm -hmm. from that sin or turning away from that um thought process or that road that you're starting to go down Right. It means turning, turning your back to that and turning, you know, turning towards God. And even if it's um, addiction or, mm -hmm. you know, because a lot of times, um, you know, and, and a lot of people, 
fall into that excuse, right? It's I have the disease of addiction, mm -hmm. and and we get that. We we totally understand. Okay, well we don't get that, but but we understand um, theoretically how addiction works and and how it takes over your life. But there are also steps you can take consciously when you're sober, when you're not high, or when you're not, you know, when you're not in front of porn on your computer. Like there are steps that you can take to to um, to get better. And that's the repenting thing. Right. So, you know, it's like maybe, you know, maybe you can't stop drinking cold turkey. Maybe you're having problems with that. But if you could get your get your fanny into AA every day, if right. you could get an accountability partner, mm -hmm. if you could, you know, so, so there's, there's a way to be repentant um, without just, like you said, flipping, flippantly um, saying, oh, sorry about that, like, yeah, I won't I, do that again. You're like, making, mm -hmm. making um, a conscious effort to change your habits, to change yes. the circumstances. Um, so, you know, taking ownership um, of an uh, ownership of, of what you did was wrong and then taking steps to change that behavior. Right. So, and this person definitely wants back in the church. Good. Um, and they have, they, yeah, I mean, <laughs> which it, is good. And that's good for them, right? Some people it's, would just run away because they're, you know, yeah, yeah, it, ashamed. It had, it had to be embarrassing, you know, especially when it says, you know, by the majority, like mm -hmm. so, most of the people in the congregation knew what was going on, and you know, and showed him the door. Um, so he went back. So that's where being Christian is really hard. Mm -hmm. And I'll say it's against my flesh, right? You know, because you would love, I would love to hold a grudge, and just you know, and and just wallow in that, you know, in the victim mentality. Oh, I'm such a victim. Like, you know, I can't believe how bad they are. Um, and that's not what the Bible is saying here. The Bible is saying, all right, well, they, you know, they're going to be repentant. So you've got to, you've got to give them another shot and you've got to, uh, yeah, and you've got to love on them. I'm not saying you need to invite them into your home mm -hmm. after they've, you know, like, I'm, I'm not saying those sort of things, but, but it says that, that he has to that he has to be treated differently than you treated him when you were confronting him. Mm -hmm. Now you have to comfort him, and I'm I think that's hard. I think that I think that's a hard ro role for role for us to to um, maneuver, and I just think it's not very natural. Um, it's almost like you have to have like short term memory. You know? Which we don't. I watch a lot of tennis. Yeah. <laughs> I love it. Australian Open's happening right now. I love watching We're tennis. We're lucky she's here, y'all. <laughs> and, um, and so that's what they talk about a lot is, you know, when things aren't going right, when you've missed opportunities and mm -hmm. you have to have a short memory and you just go on with it. And mm -hmm. that's, I think, what... Bouncing um, back. Yeah, what he's kind of calling them to do is like, okay, that is... You did your job, you corrected, you gave him the discipline he needed. There's been a little bit of time for dust to settle. Now we need to just move on. Yeah, that's hard. That's hard. Might be harder for some people than others. Um, but that's what the Apostle Paul said. I mean, who 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 would need the church more mm -hmm. um, than somebody who is who has been humbled maybe humiliated, you know, but who is who has been brought low before the Lord, they 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 need the body of Christ. Right. Uh, let's Christ. see. John says, after fifty five years of believing Jesus died on the cross and on the third day rose again, I can tell you these things because I've done them all at one time or another. So you can um, overcome by repent repenting and turn around and try not to do it again. That's right. And that's, that's what you right. have to have the heart to not want to do it again. You're going to, we all fail. I fail miserably daily. Um, yes. You know, where it's like, oh man, I'm here again, God. How did I get here again? You know, I didn't want to be here again. I mm -hmm. wanted to do it differently. And, um, but the, the first good thing is you're talking to God about it. Right. Right. You're not ignoring it. Right. So yes. And you got something to be said about that. 
keep trying. Keep, keep trying. trying. Keep trying. We'll be we'll be good at it one day. In heaven. In heaven. Yes. That's right. When we're when we're reunited. That's right. That's right. <laughs> okay, I'll go ahead and pick back up in verse nine. I wrote to you as I did to find out how far you would go in obeying me. When you forgive this man, I forgive him too. And when I forgive him for whatever is to be forgiven, I do so with Christ's authority for your benefit, so that Satan will not outsmart us, for we are very familiar with his evil schemes. <laughs> we are, right? Yeah. We are very, uh, he want, very, for, yeah. He wants, Satan wants you to hold on to that grudge. That's right. Satan, um... Satan wants to, it uh, says here in the commentary, Satan tries to harm the church by tempting it to use discipline in an unforgiving way. Mm -hmm. And um, and this, you know, and because then those who are exercising the discipline become uh, proud, right, of their purity. And, um, and that's, you know, like Jen said, like mm -hmm. she's not perfect. I tell you, I'm the worst. It's just, you know, it's not... It, there's nothing, you know, there's nothing in me that's good except for God. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, to, to laud your, your perfection perceived um, over somebody who's open, you know, has an open problem is, is uh, very, very dangerous because it's not the truth. It's not the truth. We all have, we all have a lot of issues. And so we, um, and we have to remember that we are not here to destroy people mm -hmm. we're here to restore them um so absolutely like tell them confront them um church discipline if that's what needs to be done that wakes them up and gets get some you know maybe off that path they're on but then our job is restoration and i and i think that's a harder job mm -hmm. yeah it's a yeah, harder job you, you you kind of have to humble yourself right you can't hang on to the I would never do that, but this person did, kind of right, mindset. Right. Yeah, all that gossip that you did, mm -hmm. um, now they have to walk back in and you have to look them in their face. Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah, you have, to, you, have to be, you have to be not just nice to them, you have to love them. And um, yeah, and, and anything else is just a scheme of the devil. And so that's an interesting way to think about it, right? Because... Again, there's nothing good in us, so we we can't uh, we can't get too pompous here. Yeah, and we can't do it on our own. Can't can't do it. Alrighty, I'm going to pick back up in verse 12 of Second Corinthians. Well, when I came, well, Second Corinthians two. It's Second like Corinthians it's a two. lot. It's a lot. There's a lot of numbers. A lot of numbers. Um, well, when I came to the city of Troas to preach the good news of Christ, the Lord gave me tremendous opportunities, but I couldn't rest because my dear brother Titus hadn't yet arrived with a report from you. So I said goodbye and went on to Macedonia to find him. But thanks be to God who made us his captives and leads us along in Christ's triumphant procession. Now, whatever, wherever we go, he uses us to tell others about the Lord and to spread the good news like a sweet perfume. Mm -hmm. Our lives are a fragrance presented by Christ to God, but this fragrance is perceived differently by those being saved and by those um, perishing. To those who are perishing, we are a fearful smell of death and doom. But to those who are being saved, we are a life-giving perfume. And who is adequate for such a task as this? You see, we are not like those <laughs> hucksters. And there are many of them who preach just to make money. We preach God's message with sincerity and with Christ's authority. And we know that the God who sent us is watching us. Mm. I love it. I love it. So, so Paul does this whole uh, thing where he's talking about Titus, and and Titus hadn't shown up, and so. But again, these details that we always find in the Bible, we're kind of like, what, what is that about? What, what, what happened? But all of these details are so very important. They're historical details 
Um, and so where was Titus? It doesn't say here, but we just know that he wasn't with Paul. And so these are, you know, these are important things that people can like triangulate later mm -hmm. um, to to further um, what's that word? Just um, make sure that the Bible's real. So because this historical document um, lines up with other historical documents, and so these are all important things. So. So then he's talking about his unscheduled um, trip to Macedonia, and and so he's doing all this. But it's sweet because then he stops and he, you know, he thanks God for um, his ministry, mm -hmm. and um, and and even this relationship that he has with the Corinthian believers and with the Corinthian church. So then he starts talking about something, and um, it it talks about very well in our our commentary. But but I'll tell you how I um, learned about it and. In, in the Roman Empire, they would conquer. They would conquer and they would go to to like Europe or they would go to like North Africa or even off into, you know, like the very touches of Asia there. They would go and they would conquer and they would have these processions um, that they would bring back. And they would have, usually like in the front, they would have people that they had, they had captured, but but they would be bringing them back to Rome and they were going to free them and they were going to become Roman citizens. And so to them, it was it was hopefully good news. But then there were also people maybe towards the back. Those are the people that were to be executed. Um, and so, you know, for their role and whatever it was that Rome was trying to do. And then they have all the plunder and all the, the booty, basically, you know, that they they are, were bringing back. And, and so you know what always happened in this procession was they would burn incense they would burn incense to to their you know roman gods um but that's kind of i think what he's he's talking about here and so um and it talks about it in the in our um in our commentary it says in a roman triumphal procession the roman general would display his treasures his captive again amidst a cloud of incense burned for their gods. And so to the victors, the aroma was sweet. To the captives in the parade, it was the smell of slavery and death. And when Christians preach the gospel, it is good news to some and repulsive news to others. Believers recognize the life giving fragrance of the message. To non believers, though, it smells foul, like death. It's their own death. That that is what that is what hits them, and so you know this is this is kind of what he's he's describing here is this, and he says we're a fragrance of Christ to God among those who are being saved, um, and among those who are perishing, and so because no matter what, no matter what they're all in the procession, mm -hmm. both the captives. The ones who are to be executed and the ones who are to become Roman citizens are all in the procession, good and bad, um, and yet the aroma smells different mm -hmm. to each of them. Um, and so then it talks about, you know, the aroma is death to some, it's life to others. It kind of reminds me of the imagery in, um, <clears throat> in Revelation, which you and Pastor Paul are teaching um, on tomorrow, the, the trumpet. Yeah. The sound of the trumpet where, you know, us Christians are going to be like, yes, it's here. Trumpet, it's and then great. there's yeah. going to be others that are all like, what? Oh, no. No. I didn't think that stuff was real. Right. Yes. Same kind it's of thing. Be, it's going to be painful. But, you know, I love that. I love that the Apostle, I mean, the Apostle Paul is such a, a brilliant man, such a, a fantastic writer. Obviously, the Holy Spirit is is uh, is capturing his brain and his hand and and helping him to write all of this using his style using his intellect using his gifts but still making sure that you know it's just so very powerful for us and uh, and so here he is talking about this these roman processions that were very like they knew all about that that was very normal to them in those days the Romans were conquering a whole bunch of people, mm -hmm. including them, in different times, right? So, um, but yes, he was um, describing that and then aligning it to the gospel. 
And I think there's, um, if you watch movies, if you're a movie buff, I, there's uh, uh, many movies that I think depict this. And mm. if I remember correctly, I believe Gladiator is one of them, oh. which is a, you know, a big movie yeah. back in the day. Um, and I, I think I remember that there was a procession, procession. like you were talking about. Yeah, always a procession. So mm -hmm. um, they seem to win every time. So <laughs> maybe they don't have a procession. If they win, they just like sneak back into their beds <laughs> under the, the darkness of night. But but they talk about how these processions would last like all day. Mm -hmm. They'd like wait outside the city and then like it's a parade, right? And they would come on in and people would cheer and, and it would... There were a lot of troops, right? Thousands upon thousands upon thousands of troops, and so it would take a long time for this procession to come through. But uh, but there they are. It's uh, it's historical fact. Mm -hmm. It's something that they could relate to, and Paul definitely related it to how we spread the gospel. So there you go. Then he said, "And who is adequate for these things?" So that's in the end of sixteen. So that's kind of interesting because. Um, he doesn't, he doesn't answer it here. He'll answer it later. But we already know the answer. He knows that the only reason that we're adequate um, is because of God. And he holds all adequacy. Um, so that's, that's his thing. So, but he's commissioned us and he's sent us. Um, and we have the power of the Holy Spirit in us. So I'm going to say that we, we've got... We serve an adequate God, but he alone makes us adequate when we partner with him. And then 17, um, yeah, 17, it seems like a left <laughs> turn or a right turn. I don't know. It's a turn, but, but clearly it was happening. Yes. Clearly there were like, you know, maybe like televangelists. Yeah, false our teachings. Days, false teachings, maybe a little sensational. Mm -hmm. um, but he says... That they're not sincere, and he says that they're you know they're doing it in with not right motives, money, power, whatever. But they're they're not doing it from a good place. Um, so I guess he just wanted to throw that in because he says we're not like them. Mm -mm. Yeah, there's them, and then there's us. We're over here. So um, so that's and that is still going on today. <laughs> That so does. this was, you know, thousands of years ago. Not much has changed um, in regards to that, that people are, are still getting, trying to get an angle um, for power yeah. and money and, and riches and fame and yes. adulation and all those other adjectives you could use. Um, so, yeah. And yeah. It, it, it's, it's, it's sad. That's why the a main thing for, for myself like I was saying before, was um, really following, like when when your pastor or minister, uh, priest, whichever denomination you may go to church um, at, like read along with them. Like when they are quoting from the Bible, take out your Bible, take, yeah. look it up, make yeah. sure that they're reading the entire Saying, you know, the entire mm -hmm. section or the entire verse, because there are many verses that are um, on people's uh, pillows. <laughs> they're needle printed, they're needled, needle pointed, and, and, and a they're pillow. not yes. and they're not correct because only part of the verse is on there, and it's not the verse in in, in its entirety, and when it is uh, the verse in its entirety, it has a whole different meaning than just the first part or just the last part. Yeah. So as a rule, I think you, um, it, it's kind of just best if you, if you can read four verses before and four verses after, and that usually gives you enough context to go, mm -hmm. Right, they're not talking about tithing. So right. why is it that you're pulling tithes out of this? Or, mm -hmm. or they're not talking about um, sexual sin at this part. They're talking about you know something else. So, um, yeah, because you because words can be misconstrued and and fact checked, fact, fact checked, fact checked 
check your um, your your pastor minute it lovingly, like we of were course. talking before. It's just like, hey, I was you know you preached about this, and I just had some more questions. I really don't I don't understand or you know when I was reading and, and make it a conversation that you want to learn more. I'm sure Absolutely. I'm sure they would they would welcome, welcome. that kind of um, conversation. Well, especially if they. I just say, even as myself, like if I misconstrued something or if I, you know, if, if I made it seem like something else, like I, I wouldn't want to be misunderstood and I don't want to, I don't want to like cherry pick or, or change the word of God to just suit something. So, you know, it, it would just, it would make your pastor better. Mm -hmm. It would make your pastor, um, just more equipped and then, to, oh, wow. Yeah. I can see how how I, I probably painted that in a light that wasn't that what that wasn't what I meant and that that's I'm just speaking as myself I would think that yeah. that would be I'd be like oh wow I, I kind of didn't understand that people would think about it that way and not this way so sometimes it's communication but what a blessing what a blessing when a congregant cares enough right to to ask questions or to say I, I didn't see where you were going with that Right, and as a and as a congregation, I think it's a loving thing to do to hold your um, your leaders of the church yes, accountable. Accountable for sure, you for know? sure. So In it's a give. Ways. It's a give and take. It's mm -hmm. a give and take, and you know they. You don't want to be led astray, or, or and also too, you know, we don't all have the same. Um, upbringing. We don't all have the same experiences in life. Mm -hmm. So, um, you know, Pastor Tina here could be preaching on something and, and it makes sense with her life experience, but somebody else's life experience, it, it doesn't hit the same way. Right. Or and culturally. Yeah. And or, so that, that yes. needs to be brought to, you know, mm -hmm. the attention of, you know, the person giving the sermon, like, Hey, you may want to you know, rethink this or... It didn't make sense. Yeah. Yeah. Like, oh, okay. It made total sense to me. <laughs> like, yeah, if you, if you preach that one again, you should probably change that. Yeah. So uh, let's see. John said here, um, yes, and you know the devil knows them all and will bring them to mind at any time he wants just to torment you with doubt about your salvation when least expected. Mm -hmm. The issues you had when you were unsaved will always be there and the ones after too also. But Jesus said, I choose you before the foundation um, of, of the earth to be mine. I love that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we have to, we always have to be a little bit careful that we don't let the, the enemy creep in, right? And, and, and lie to you. Yeah, and, and just pull the truth out, mm -hmm. you know, and replace it with a, with a ugly um, counterfeit message. You know, where it's like, oh, well, you know, you're, they're going to come down on you. They're going to, you know, it's like, oh, well, that's not exactly what, what God says. God mm -hmm. says before the foundations of the world, you were mine. And, uh, and that's, that's what he said. And that's what he means. He expects obedience. Mm -hmm. um, he expects you to love him and to share the gospel. But, yeah, it's, uh, as a child of God, you should... Um, you should definitely be also feeling, you know, his love and, and some self-confidence about that love, you know. I don't think it's healthy to go around and be like, oh, I'm the, I'm, I'm, I'm a so sinner, bad. I'm a sinner. I'm, yeah, like, the, you know, like, like I, I'm a sinner, but I'm saved by grace. So, you know, like, hey, let's find some joy in this imperfection that we are um, because we have Jesus, we have the Holy Spirit life power yes like that's so amazing and we've all we've chosen his gift of salvation we've made the right choice we made the right choice good choice and we need to be confident in that choice good cho we do we do so that's and that's like john's saying you mm -hmm. know like they satan would love to tell you all the time like oh all, you messed up there are times honest to <clears throat> honestly mm -hmm. when i go to, i'm going to sleep and my past will come into my head you know, of all the things that I did in my teens and early 20s that I would like to erase. Um, and, and I'll start praying and I'm like, I'll be like, God, take these, take these thoughts away, take these mm -hmm. thoughts away. 
I, I'm. You've already forgiven yes, me for them. I, I don't forgive myself, but I know you've forgiven exactly. me. Exactly. But I do. There's. I'm not proud, but yeah. Yeah. I like. Yeah. I'm playing like flashbacks of my youth, and I'm like, man, was I just a, <laughs> a ding dong dummy? You know, what was I thinking? Kind of scenario. We all. Oh we've yeah. We've all been there. Oh, yeah. We've all been there. So it's uh yeah. So yeah, not allowing. Not allowing the the devil to to get a foothold. Mm -hmm. That's so important. And and restoration, right? You know, Jesus has already restored us if we asked him into our hearts. So, you know, so and if that's something that you are contemplating tonight, like because there are people who watch us or they watch recordings and they're not believers. And it's not hard to accept the free gift of salvation you just need to repent we talked about what repentance was mm -hmm. it's not just say hey sorry about that god like it's like i i'm not doing that anymore i'm doing a 180 not a 360 i'm doing a 180 i'm facing the other way and i'm gonna repent and i'm sorry i'm sorry lord because that that wasn't that wasn't right and i was rebelling against you and then you know you say lord i i, I want you in my life i want mm -hmm. you in my heart and I need the Holy Spirit to guide me. That's it. That's all you have to do is repent and believe, right? Ask him into your heart. And and then you can, and then you're saved. You have the free gift of salvation. Mm -hmm. It makes all the difference eternally and also in your life here. So, you know, just don't forget that when <clears throat> when you need him, he's right here for you. Mm -hmm. Um and you can come to him again and again and again and again. I run to him every day. I need him every day of my life. So. Right. And John said you weren't thinking you were being yourself, Jen. That was you then. Mm -hmm. It's true. Yeah. It's true. We all have yep. a past. We all have things we regret. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> and God says that you know after you've repented, which means you don't want to play those games anymore, he says he casts your sins as far as the east is from the west. Um, and he doesn't remember them anymore, which doesn't make any sense, but some, it must be some kind of supernatural thing, as only God can do. Um, he's like, yeah, well, you're covered by the blood of Jesus, so we don't need to, we don't need to bring that up. Just Satan. Satan likes oh, yeah, to bring he up. likes to bring up all your faults. And he's such a meddler. Mm -hmm. he's such and a meddler. make you believe or think that you're not worthy. You're worthy. And God says, nope, sorry, you're wrong. You're, you're mine. Worthy. I made you. Yes, <laughs> you're worthy. And if you, you know, if you truly <clears throat> love him, truly mm -hmm. follow him, truly give him, um, give him everything that you, that you have, your entire being, um, it'll be the, the best thing you ever did. Best thing, best thing. Well, thanks everybody. I think we're, yep, we're, we're next is chapter three. So, we're going to look at chapter 3 next Tuesday night. We're going to look at Revelation chapter 3 um, uh, tomorrow night at 7. And Leviticus, they're in the very last chapter of Leviticus. That's Thursday at 7. So Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday at 7, right here, wherever you found us. You can find us again, um, hopefully, or bookmark this page. And, uh, and we would love it if you would join us. 5 o'clock on Sundays is our worship service. We would love to have you with us as the, at that point as well. Um, but if you're out to study the Bible this year, um, Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday at 7 are the way um, that you can make a real dent. You can study three books of the Bible per week. Um, that's If you can keep them straight, then, then that's a great thing. Great thing for you and me. Yes. Did John write anything uh, else? He says, uh, you're a new person now. Amen. We are a new person. Once we accept Jesus Christ into our heart, um, we are a new creation. That's mm -hmm. what, uh, actually, we're going to, I think we're going to read that soon here in our study. So, so thanks, everybody. Thank you for joining us tonight. Thank you. Very nice to, to have you with us. Thanks for your comments. And uh, if you're watching this later and you have any more questions, hey, just um, hit the comment stuff or Hit the contact us. We're always here for you um, and, uh, and want to help you and guide you in this path that you're on, in this path we're all on together. So God bless you. Have a great week.
Bye.